The makers of Campbell's Soups present The Campbell Playhouse, Orson Welles, producer. Good evening. This is Orson Welles. For centuries, the heroes of our popular tales have been killers, outlaws, soldiers, knights in armor, warrior kings. Only recently, within the memory of most of you who are listening tonight, has the healer become a hero, the man who is skillful in making people whole instead of cutting them up, the man who strives to persevere life rather than to destroy it. Tonight's story is one of the first of the recent series of books, plays, and films about men of medicine. In 1930, its author, Mr. Sinclair Lewis, was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. Eight years ago, Aerosmith was made into a motion picture. The star of that picture was Miss Helen Hayes. She is here tonight to play in the Campbell Playhouse the same role that she created on the screen. It would be an impertinence for me to attempt any sort of an introduction one of the greatest and most versatile actresses of our time. And I needn't tell you how proud and happy my sponsor and I and all of us in the Campbell Playhouse are in having her with us tonight. And now for tonight's story. The Campbell Playhouse presents Aerosmith, starring Helen Hayes and Orson Welles. <laughs> Dr. Martin Aerosmith, in the name of His Majesty, King Gustav of Sweden, and on behalf of the honored members of the Nobel Prize Committee, it is my privilege to welcome you to the eminent fellowship of those who, in the realms of science, art, and literature, have rendered distinguished service to the preservation and betterment of humankind. In recognition, therefore, of your brilliant achievement in the fields of bacteriology and physical chemistry and your unswerving devotion to the tenets of pure science, I have the honor to present to you, Martin Aerosmith. Martin Aerosmith. That's my name. On all sides of me sit leading men of science. Looking down at me, I recognize some of their faces. That man on the aisle to the right and the one just in back of him, last year's chemistry award. This is the longest walk I can remember. From my seat in the back of the hall down to this platform. A 21-year walk. <laughs> I started it with two others. With Leora and Dr. Gottlieb. Now I'm finishing it, alone. I started it 21 years ago, one September evening, in the chemistry lab at Winnemac. Class stood very still, I remember, not too close, and the assistant holding a guinea pig by its legs. Dr. Gottlieb dipped his hands in the bichloride solution and shook them a quick shake, fingers down, like the fingers of a pianist above the keys took a hypodermic this needle from the instrument says, bath and lifted the test tube. With Miss Antwerp. But not I'm sure that in the bottom of the tumbler there was cotton to keep the tubes from being broken. I cannot advise breaking tubes of anthracis germs and afterwards getting the hands into the culture. You might merely get anthrax boiled so you might die a little young. <laughs> I shall now inoculate the second guinea pig and the class will be dismissed. Dr. Gottlieb. Dr. Gottlieb. Well? Yes, yes. Oh, Professor Gottlieb. My name is Aerosmith, Martin Aerosmith. I'm a medical freshman, Winnemac, DA. I'd like awfully to take bacteriology this fall instead of next year. See, I, I've had a lot of chemistry. Oh, no, it is not time for you. Oh, I know I could do it now, Professor. What do you say your name is? Aerosmith, sir. Well, Aerosmith, have you taken physical chemistry? 
No, sir, but I, I did pretty well in organic. Organic chemistry, puzzle chemistry, stink chemistry, drugstore chemistry. Physical chemistry is power. It is exactness, it is life. But organic chemistry, that is a trade for pot washers. No, you are too young. Come back in a year, Aerosmith. That year was a time of waiting. I took the first year medical courses and passed them. I learned the proper sugar-coated pills and phrases to comfort patients with while you estimated how much you could charge them. Most of the professors at Winnemac weren't teaching science. They were simply preparing us for a trade. And that was all most of the students wanted. Knowledge that they could cash in on. They didn't talk about saving lives, but about losing cases, losing dollars. My second year, I took Dr. Gottlieb's bacteriology course. And that winter, I spent more time with guinea pigs, mice, and rats than with people. I lived in a world of test tubes filled with watery serum or deadly bacilli of roaring Bunsen flames and steaming sterilizers. Hello, Aerosmith. Oh, hello, Professor Gardner. You are working late tonight. Let me see your slide. Sure. Ah. Ah. Arrow Smith, you have craftsmanship. Thank you, sir. Oh, there is an art in science for a few. I see you already. And I watched you in the lab before. Uh, let me see your notes. Yes, sir. Ah. Hmm. Perhaps next thing you would like to try trypanosomes of sleeping sickness. Oh, yes, sir. I've been very They're very, very interesting and very ticklish to handle. It's quite a nice disease. In some villages in Africa, 50% of the people have it. It is invariably fatal. Notes are not bad, but they can still be more complete. Aerosmith, the most important part of living is not the living, but pondering upon it. And the most important part of experimentation is not doing the experiment, but making notes. Very accurate notes. Well, I'll try to do better with my notes, Professor. I want to do research like you, Professor Gottlieb. You've accomplished so much. The whole world knows what you've done. No, no, I have done nothing except be unpleasant to people that claim too much. But I have dreams of real discovery someday, and for that I need help. You see, Aerosmith, not five times in five years do I have a student who understands craftsmanship and precision and maybe some peak imagination in hypotheses. I think perhaps you may one day be such a student, and perhaps we can help each other, you and I. So, now it's midnight. I would be pleased if you should come to my room and have a little sandwich, Aerosmith, and we can talk some more. Dr. Gottlieb pointed me as student laboratory assistant, I felt very important. One day, in April, I went over to the Zenith Hospital for a strain of yes, bacillus from a it? patient. Can I help I'm you? I'm Dr. Gottlieb's assistant. I'm looking for Dr. Swenson's patient, Ward D, number 17. The second floor, third door to the right. In the passage, there was a young probationer on her knees on the floor. Her yellow hair had fallen over her eyes, and her green and white uniform was as grubby as her pail of scrub water. Hey. Hey, hey, would you walk over on this side, please? I'm still scrubbing over there. Nurse, I want to find Ward D. Do you? I do. I'm sorry to interrupt your work. It looks awfully important. Well, it isn't. The superintendent of nurses put me at scrubbing. We aren't ever supposed to scrub floors, you know, because you caught me smoking a cigarette. <laughs> He's an old terror. <sighs> if she found a child like you wandering around here, she'd drag you out by the ear. It's my impression that even probationers learn that the first duty of a nurse is to stand when addressing a doctor. I'd like oh. to find Ward D to take a strain of... Uh, very dangerous microbe, and if you'll kindly direct oh, me I'm to... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I've been getting fresh again. I didn't mean to be rude. I was just... Scrubbing makes me bad-tempered. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, but... You do seem so young for a doctor. I'm not. I'm a medical student. I was showing off. So was I. <laughs> Ouch, I'm so stiff. Yeah, let me help you. Thanks. Well, pretty hard, this training for nursing, I guess. Not so awful. But it's about as romantic as being a hired girl. That's what we call them in Dakota. I come from Dakota? I come from the most enterprising town in the entire state of North Dakota. Wheatsylvania, it's called. It has 362 inhabitants. Are you in the U Medical School? Yeah, I'm a junior in Mohalis. I'll bet you're good. I don't know. I'm not much of a medic, really. I like the lab side. I think I'd be a bacteriologist. I'm not much for the bedside manner. I'm glad you're not. You get it in here plenty. <laughs> you ought to hear some of the doctors. That are the sweetest old pussies with their patients, the way they bawl out the nurses. <laughs> <laughs> but lads, now, they seem sort of real, what I've seen of them. 
I don't suppose you can bluff a bacteria. What is a bacterium? No, they're... Say, what do they call you? Me? Oh, it's an idiotic name. Leora Tozer. <laughs> What's the matter with Leora? It's fine. Do you really think so? Say, when you get away from the hospital for dinner, would you go out with me, say, tonight? What? Please. All right. We'll go to the Grand. Oh, no, that's terribly expensive unless you're awfully rich. Oh, you I'm, aren't, are you? I'm not. I just enough money to get through medical school, but I'd awfully like to show you... Let's you know. go to the Bijou. It's a nice place, and it isn't expensive, and they got a funny machine there. When you drop nickels in, it plays brassy kind of tunes like a merry-go-round. <laughs> See, I'm glad you're so crazy about your lab work, because, well, everybody was perfectly sane where I came from. I got awful tired of being crazy all alone. <laughs> Even with the best of them, research has been largely a matter of trial and error, the empirical method it's called. You try to establish a general law so you can predict what will happen the next time, the time after that. And that's where Gottlieb leaves all these detailed, grubbing, machine-made researchers. You see what I mean? Yes, I think I do. Anyway, I get the way you feel about him. Uh, you don't have to shout so, you know. Oh, was I shouting? I didn't mean to. Only when I get to thinking about the way most of these profs don't even know what Gottlieb's up to, the way those idiots don't even see the relation of his work on the synthesis of antibodies, the discoveries of... Arrhenius, gee. You're a... Uh, hope I'm not boring you. I'm loving it. I get so technical and so noisy. You didn't even stop me and tell me I ought to have better manners. I don't see anything wrong with your manners. Don't you really? Has someone been trying to bring you up? Yeah, but not with any success. Listen, I like having you trust me. I'm not earnest, and I hadn't any brains whatever. But I do love it when my men think I'm intelligent enough to hear what they really you don't think. You have to tell me about yourself. I've always known you, Leora. I'm not going to let you go no matter what. You're going to marry me. Yes. I guess I am. At the end of my medical course, Leora and I were married at the city hall, Zenith. You're mine now, darling. I warn you, it isn't going to be a bit of use of you ever looking at any other woman again. I'd tear her eyes out. Oh, you needn't think so well of yourself. I don't, Leora. You'll be happy with me because you can bully me. Because I'll tag after you the way no one else ever would. I'm... I'm stupid and ordinary. Oh, Leora. Oh, yes, I am. But I worship you. I know your work's more important than I am. Maybe more important than you are. More... Oh, Martin. I do love you so. We lived at Zenith Hospital. Or I did. She lived out of town. I saw her as often as I could, but I didn't go near Dr. Godley. The old man never said anything, but I remember the way he shook his head when he looked over the notes on my last half-hearted experiment. And my duties as an intern kept me too busy to do much regretting. Now, I saw Gottlieb once more before I left Zenith. One night I was off duty. Leora and I were walking home from the movies, and ahead of us the tall, stooped figure of a man appeared coming towards us slowly down the street, under the street lamp. Suddenly saw his face. Martin! Martin, you still remember me? Dr. Gottlieb. <laughs> of course I remember you. How is everything? Martin? Everything's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm getting along, I guess. Dr. Gottlieb, I want you to meet my wife. Mrs. Arrowsmith. Dr. Gottlieb, I'm glad to know you. Thank you. Your husband, he was a good chaser of little bugs. <laughs> Sometime, Mrs. Arrowsmith, make him remember. Yes, doctor, I will. Good night. Good night. Good night, Dr. Gottlieb. So that's your Dr. Gottlieb. Yeah. Say, Leora, how does he strike you? I think he's the greatest man I've ever seen. I don't know how I know, but he is. I wish... I wish we were going to see him again. He, he's the first man I ever laid eyes on that I'd leave you for, Martin, if he wanted me. He's... Oh, he's like a sword. No, he's like a brain walking. Hmm. Oh, and he looks so wretched. I wanted to cry. I'd black his shoes, Martin. Yeah. So would I, Leora. 
But we didn't see Dr. Gottlieb again before we left Zenith. Leora's family wanted us to come to their town in Dakota. When I'd finished my training, they offered to finance me while I started my practice. So soon after we arrived, they held a family council with Mrs. Toza presiding. I have such a nice idea, Martin. Why can't we fix you up an office out in the barn? It'd be so handy to the house for you to get to meals on time. You could keep an eye on the house. The barn? I don't think you understand, Mother Toast. Why, yes, the old harness room. It's partly sealed, and we could put in some nice tar paper or even do Mother Toast, what the dickens do you think I'm planning to do? I'm not a hired man in a livery stable or a kid looking for a place to put his bird's eggs. I was thinking of opening an office as a physician. Yeah, but you aren't much of a physician yet. You're just getting your toes in. Darn good physician, Bert. Now, look here, Mars. As we're putting up the money, I... I don't want to be a tightwad, but after all, a dollar is a dollar... If we furnish the dough, we've got to decide the best way to spend it. Isn't that so, Pop? Look, Father. I want you to lend us $1,000 outright. To use as we see fit. $1,000? We'll pay you 6%. No, we won't. We'll pay 5 That's enough. And mortgage is bringing 6 7 and 8 Five's enough. And we want our own say absolute as to how we use it. To fix up an office or anything else. Now, Leo, or that's you're a... crazy. I suppose we'll have to lend you some money, but... You'll blame well come to us for it from time to time. And you'll blame well take our advice. Bertie. And the barn's plenty good enough. Bertie, I know what we'll do. You seem to have the barn on your brain. Ah, you move your old bank there, and Martin will take the bank building for his office. Now, that's now there's no different. sense to you two showing off and trying to be smart. Either you do what I say, just exactly what I say, or Martin and I take the first train back to Zenith, and I mean it. Plenty of places open from there with a big salary, so we won't have to be dependent on anybody. Well, now, Ori, don't take it that way. Well, do we get our thousand dollars or do we go back to Zenith? The aura won out. I got my office. It was in a rickety building near the station. We nailed a new sign on the door. On it were gold letters. Martin Arasis Smith, M.D. <laughs> Gee, Martin, it looks grand. And it's fun having a place all your own, isn't it? Yeah. I wish the patients would start coming in, though. I kind of expected a few of them today. Ah, you don't know this town. The farmers will watch that sign until the shine's all off, <laughs> and then one of them will maybe have the courage to try the new doctor. Yeah, well, what am I going to do, just sit here and wait? Come over here, Martin. I'll show you what you're going to do. See this old box? Yeah. Well, here's an auger I swiped from home. You're going to bore holes in that box just big enough to hold test tubes, and I'm rigging up an oven contraption for a sterilizer. Hey, Laura, you figured... All that out for me? No. Not for you. For an old man who believes in you. My first patient had an ulcerated tooth. I pulled it. The second had run a fish hook in his finger. I cauterized the wound. Both patients lived. I expected a stream of patients from then on. I even made a first installment on a Ford car. Then I was awakened one morning at three o'clock. Martin, Martin, wake up. Quick, the telephone. All right, just a second. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is the doctor speaking. Henry Novak? Leopolis Road. Yeah. Let's see. Since last night? All right, I'll drive right over. Novak. Doctor, come in. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> that's right. This way, Doctor. The little one is breathing Man, I'll bad. I'll water Novak quickly. Here, baby. Baby, open your mouth. That's a good girl. Here's, Give me your hand. Here's water, Doctor. All right. How is she? Come over here, Novak. Child's pretty sick. Looks like diphtheria. Brought some antitoxin well injected. It's the only chance. Yes, Doctor. She very sick. I'm afraid so. I give him some hot clothes, towels, napkins, anything. This room ought to be moist to keep water boiling on that stove. No, all right, Doctor. I do everything you say. Just so you save yeah, her. There now. We'll inject. Towel. Towel. Here's some towels, Doctor. I'll wrap her up. Lift that side. This way. Doctor. Yep. Yes, what? Doctor. What's wrong? Doctor, she's so still suddenly. Doctor! Leora. Leora, it was my fault. Martin, don't. 
I should have operated. I, I should have operated. She'd be all right now. Operate. You did the wrong thing. You did all you could, Martin. Probably all anyone could do. They called you too late that time. I'll never practice medicine again. I'll never practice... Stop saying those things. It'll be different in the morning. Oh, it's no use. I'm through. I'm no good. I can't <laughs> face people in this town when they know about it. Through. Martin. I'm through. Martin, listen to me. Do you really think you're the only doctor that ever lost a patient? You did your best. Now get some sleep, Martin. Well, I did get over it. In a couple of years, I built up a pretty fair practice at Wheat Sylvania. I became a director of Bert Tozer's bank. It was a good life, in a way. In the summer, Leora and I drove over to Pony River for picnic suppers and for swimming. In autumn, there was duck hunting. The winter sleigh rides and socials. Then one day, my fourth year there, Sundalius, the great scientist and plague fighter, came to Minneapolis to lecture, and I made the 60-mile trip to hear him. After the lecture, I waited to talk to him. There were things I wanted to ask him. He invited me to a beer garden. How did they like my lecture? Well, they liked it fine, Dr. Sundalius. Oh, it's so hot tonight. I've been lecturing nine times a week. Des Moines, Fort George, La Crosse, Elgin, and... and oh, I forget. Was it all right, really? Oh, honestly, I've... I've never enjoyed anything so much in my life. Aerosmith, Smith, they hated my lecture, but you make me feel like a prophet. Come, have another drink. All right. As a hygienist, I wore on alcohol. In excessive quantities, it's almost as bad as ice cream soda. <laughs> but as one who's fond of talking, I find a nice long glass of lager, a great solvent for human idiocy. I remember that. Now then, my friend, what do you wish to know? Well, I'll tell you, Doctor, I'd like you to tell me, they have city health bureaus in Europe? They do. They are only less ineffectual than our own. See that girl at the table over there? Yes. Well, what about it? What ankles? What shoulders? And ah, this is good beer, Alice Smith. Have some more. Ah, <laughs> lecturing, such nonsense. I would give it up. I'm wearing dress clothes on a night like this too, Doctor. Do you know Doctor Gottlieb? Gottlieb? I should say I know him. He is now at the Institute of McGurk. Gottlieb has done some great experiments. Great. Gottlieb would not sit here bawling like me. No. Gottlieb sits home and works. Makes me look like a circus clown. He shows me what a fool I am. He is the spirit of science. He is the leader in our fight to push diseases off the earth. He wanted me to work with him once. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what I should have done. Not just tinkered a lot of worn-out bodies. Someday, my dear young fellow, instead of peddling pills, maybe you will follow me or Gottlieb. Yeah, it is one and the same. We scientists, we must work together. To make a new world. Good world for men to live in. Hey, waiter! Bring another beer! That winter, I did some experiments on the relation of the Mollison production to the age of culture. My findings were published in the Journal of Infectious Diseases, and then things began to change for me in Wheatsylvania. An epidemic of blackleg broke out among the cattle in Crimson County, and the state veterinarian had been called, but the disease was spreading. With Leora's help, I made a new vaccine in my homemade lab. I injected cattle without charge and the disease stopped. The veterinary sent in a complaint to the State Board of Health reporting my interference and then I I discovered that a farmer's wife was a typhoid carrier in a section where the disease was prevalent. I demanded that she be quarantined and the community rose up in arms about it. A meeting was held demanding my removal but the quarantine was enforced and the typhoid of course disappeared. Then I made the mistake that finished me in Wheatsylvania. Two farmers' children fell ill. I diagnosed their cases as smallpox and demanded several vaccinations throughout the county. Cases turned out to be chickenpox. After that, life became impossible. In August, the R and I went to the county fair, I remember. On the fairgrounds, I seemed to cause more interest among the farmers than any of the exhibits. Hey, Doc! Come on over and see my melons. They grow fast in your smallpox. Hello, Mr. Harris Smith. How are you today? Got a pimple on my chin, Doc. What is it, smallpox? Now, without plaguing the doctor. Yeah! I expect he's got plague enough. He'd have more smallpox cases lately, have you, Doc? Yeah! What's the latest figures on that smallpox epidemic you discovered, huh? Over here, Mr. Harris Smith, the embroidery work. Well, you sure go in for fancy diseases, Doc. You ain't found any cholera, have you? Yeah. 
Looks like I'm licked, Leora. May as well get out. Nothing more I can do here. Take years before they trust me again. I'm glad, Martin. You're too good for them here. I've learned a little something here, even if I failed. I... Yeah, I guess I don't know how to handle people, that's all. I could stick it on, I would. Except that life's short, and I think I'm a good worker in some ways. Gottlieb sort. Maybe I'll still get a chance. Where do we go, Martin? I have the slightest idea. Where I can be useful. Gee, it's fierce being married. Here I expected to be a pillar of the community. Now I have to follow you out on the road and be a hobo. Well, I'm too lazy to look up a new husband. Martin. Yeah? Remember that oath Dr. Gottlieb gave you? The first night we were together, you told it to me. Say it again, Martin. Now. All right, I'll try. I don't know if I can remember it. Tina. God give me unclouded eyes and freedom from hate. God give me quiet and relentless anger against all pretense and all pretentious work and all work left slack and unfinished. God give me a restlessness whereby I may neither sleep nor accept praise till my observed results equal my calculated results. For in pious glee I discover and assault my error. God give me strength not to trust in God. You are listening to the Campbell Playhouse presentation of Aerosmith, starring Helen Hayes and Orson Welles. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. And now we resume our Campbell Playhouse presentation of Aerosmith, starring Helen Hayes and Orson Welles. Through Dr. Gottlieb, I got a position at the McGurk Institute in New York. My laboratory there was the finest I'd ever seen. I had a trained assistant. I had all the apparatus known to research. And in the midst of all this white tile scientific splendor, Dr. Gottlieb was waiting for me. Martin. Oh, Dr. Gottlieb. Oh, Martin, this is very good. <laughs> you, you are near to me. My laboratory is just three doors down the hall. You door. don't know how grateful I am to you, Dr. Oh, Gottlieb. Oh, gratitude, Pa. Um, how, how is that girl you married? Oh, she, she's fine, Doctor. I have an idea she's good for you, that little girl. Yeah, she make you work. Look here, Dr. Gottlieb. Do you really think I know enough to work here? I want terribly to succeed. Uh, succeed? I have heard that word. Um, uh, it is English? Oh, yeah. It is a word that little schoolboys use at the University of uh, Winnemac. It means passing examinations. But, Martin, let us be clear. You know something of laboratory technique. You have heard about these bacilli. You are not a good chemist, and mathematics, poor, most terrible. But uh, you have curiosity and you are stubborn. Therefore, I think you will either make a very good scientist or a very bad one. Uh, this is your chance to find out, Arrowsmith. I went to work that year trying to produce a more effective antitoxin for treatment of tropical diseases. I fumbled at first. I made vast experiments with no results. I tried again. Day after day, week after week. Once, 
For a few hours, I thought I'd found something. Martin, you're home early. Yeah, I guess I am. I'm just up already, but I'll make it right away. You probably want to get back in a hurry, huh? No, I'm not going back to lab. Not tonight, Leora. I'll tell you what, let's go out to dinner in the movies or something, huh? Martin, what's the matter? Do you suddenly feel that you had to entertain me? I didn't want to go back to lab. I... I don't know if I ever want to go back. But Martin, your experiment. Today I thought I'd made some progress. I took my notes to Dr. Gottlieb. He showed me my mistake. Laura, I'm tired out. In eight months here at McGurk, I've done nothing. I haven't been worth my keep. Has the director said anything no. to you? No. Has Dr. Gottlieb? No, they're all kind and patient. But Leora, they expect me to accomplish something. But you have, Martin. You're antitoxin. You've almost got it. Yes, almost. But you can't inoculate people with a serum that's almost right. I... I just go on forever experimenting and failing every time. I'm beginning to think I've got the habit of failing. Martin, listen to me. You put that coat back on. What? I'm not cooking supper tonight, and I'm not going out to eat with you. You'll go right back to that lab and keep trailing after those little bugs, and you're going to forget about me like you usually do. And when you come home at midnight, there'll be a plate of sandwiches on the table here. And then if you've been real good, you can go to bed. Now go on. Put on your coat. It was that night I noticed a curious thing. Almost under my eyes, a flask of cloudy bacteria suddenly cleared some unknown organism. It destroyed the germs in my culture. So I spent five days and five nights in the lab, and Leora slipped in with sandwiches and coffee and then slipped out again unnoticed. And on the evening of the fifth day, I isolated the germ killers. I called it the X principle. I went out, got drunk, and I slept for two days. The third day, I went back to the McGurk Institute. There was a message from Dr. Gottlieb to go and see him. Well... Martin, I have something I must say to you. Uh, Mr. McGurk has talked to me. He has heard of this discovery of yours, this uh, ex-principle. He's very happy. He wishes to establish you here a, uh, for you a new department of pathology with you as head. What shall I do, Dr. Gartlin? Shall I accept? Uh, no, Martin, I don't think you will. Why not? Shouldn't I? Something sort of bad, uh, well, perhaps not altogether bad, has happened. Bad? Well, what is it? Oh, in a way, it is a pity, Martin, what I have to tell you. You are not the discoverer of the ex-principle. What? Someone else has done it. They have not. I've searched all literature, and except for Bernstein, not one person has even... Good Lord, Dr. Gotti, you mean that all I've done all these months has just been wasted? I... Oh, and I'm a fool. Well, anyway, Dubois of the Pasteur Institute has just Dubois. now published in the Camp Rondeau this report. It is your ex-principle absolute. Only he calls it bacteriophage. Um, Lord, maybe I ought to care, but... Of course, you could claim to be co-discoverer and spend the rest of your life fighting to get recognized, or you could forget it and write a nice letter congratulating Dubois... And go back to work. I'll go back to work. Nothing else to do. I guess uh, McGurk will chuck the new department now. Oh, yeah? There's no doubt. Yeah. I have time to finish my research. Maybe i get some points that Dubois hasn't hit on. And I'll publish it to corroborate him. Confound him. Give me the report, Doctor, I suppose. I suppose now you're glad that I'm saved from being a success. Well, I ought to be. It is a sin against my religion that I am not... But I am getting old, and you are my friend. I am sorry that you are not to have the fun of being pretentious and successful for a while. Martin, it is nice that you will cooperate, Dubois. That is science. To work and not to care too much if somebody else gets the credit. So now I threw myself into the task of making a serum to combat all kinds of diseases. I immunized rabbits against pneumonia and found that the immunity spread to other rabbits. Then I injected rats with deadly bubonic germs and produced an immunity to the plague. And my lab became known as the pest house. I practically lived in it. Then one day, a visitor came to the Institute. What? Sundalius. How are you, my boy? I haven't seen you since... Oh, that night we drank so much lager, huh? Yeah. I remember. I had to carry you to the hotel. Well, Doctor, I had a notion it was the other way around. Yeah? Uh, yeah. No matter. We help each other. <laughs> well, what did I tell you, Alice? 
You belong in such a place as this, mm-hmm. chasing diseases off the earth. They tell me you've made a fine serum. I'm still making it. Mm. How would you like me to help you, Martin? You mean... Oh, no, no. Not here in the laboratory. In the big laboratory, the world. The place where we fight the plague like bubonic. It is now on the island of St. Hubert. Soon it may spread through the West Indies. From there, who knows? Thanks, Sunday. I have to finish my experiment. I'm still not sure of my serum. Maybe later... Oh, Martin, listen to me. You can be sure of your serum only one way, by testing it. I know, but... Not on guinea pigs, on human beings. My boy. Come with Sunday, Mr. St. Hubert. I couldn't promise. I'd have to speak to Dr. Godley, Mr. McGurk. I've spoken to them already. Yeah, we've been plotting against you. My boat leaves day after tomorrow. Martin, we'll have such good fun. And maybe we wipe out old devil bubonic. Huh? I'm going with you, Martin. No, Leora, you're not going with me. Well, I am. It's not safe, Leora. Billy, of course it is. You can shoot your old serum into me, and then I'll be absolutely all right. Oh, I have a husband who cures things I have. I'm going to blow in a lot of money on thin dresses, though I bet St. Hubert isn't one bit hotter than Dakota on an August listen, day. Listen, Leora, darling, listen. I do think the serum will immunize against the plague. You bet I'll be mighty well injected with it myself, but I don't know. Even if it were practically perfect, there'd always be some people who wouldn't protect her. You simply can't go, sweet. Martin, don't you know I haven't any life outside of you? I might have had, but honestly, I've been glad to let you absorb me. I'm I'm lazy and useless and ignorant, except as maybe I can keep you comfortable. If you were off there, and I didn't know you were all right, or if you died and somebody else cared for your body that I've loved so, I'd go mad. I mean it. Can't you see I mean it? I'd go mad. It's just, I'm you, and I've got to be with you. And I will help you, make your serum and everything. You know how often I've helped you. And maybe in St. Hubert, maybe you wouldn't find anybody that could help you, even my little bit. I'll cook and everything. Darling, don't make it harder for me. It's it's going to be hard enough in any case. Martin, don't you dare use those old stuck-up expressions that husbands have been drooling out to wives forever and ever. I'm not a wife, any more than you're a husband. Oh, you're a rotten husband. You neglect me, absolutely. The only time you know what I've got on is, is, is when some button slips and then you ball me out. But I don't care. I'd rather have you than, than a good husband. And, and... Besides, I'm going. Dr. Gottlieb. Yeah? Yeah? Who, who is it? It's me, Dr. Gottlieb. I've come to say goodbye. Goodbye? Yeah. Oh, that has such a final sound. But perhaps you are right. Perhaps we don't see each other again. Eric Smith, I am growing old and I have my worries. You are a man and you are a genuine worker now. But uh, don't mind if I give you some advice. Dr. Gottlieb, you know I don't. Be sure you don't let anything, yeah. not even your own kind heart, spoil your experiment at St. Hubert. Remember to use the serum with only half your patients and keep the others as controls under normal hygienic conditions, but without the serum. Pay no attention to what Sandelia says. He is a great man, but he is not a scientist. So many men, Martin, are kind and neighborly. So few have added to knowledge. You have the chance. You may be the man that ends all plague. You must have pity, but not for those you see dying. You must have pity for generation after generation yet to come. That is your work, Martin. And whatever God there is, may he bless you. I promise to do what you say, Doctor. Yeah, maybe old Gottlieb will have help too, maybe. Leora and I sailed the next day from Hoboken. Very late one night, ten days later, our ship dropped anchor in the harbor of St. Hubert. The island was quarantined, so no one was taken on board. Sondalius, Leora, and I stood alone on the deck. On shore, we spied a few lights. One appeared to be moving toward us, but most of the town was dark. Dark and still. 
Doctor? No, not exactly. I'm Dr. Stokes of St. Swithin Parish. For all of us, almost everything nowadays, the port doctor died a couple of days ago. How many bubonic cases you got now? Lord knows. Maybe a thousand. Ten million rats. So sleepy. Well, we better be going ashore. Here, I'll help you with your bags. Listen, Leora. You better stay on the ship. You better not come, see? Please don't. Not come? And me, the secretary and technical assistant of the McGurk Commission? Oh. Martin. Yes, darling? Oh, gosh, I'm scared blue. The next morning, we awoke in a bungalow at the edge of the town. The port doctor had lived there, but he went out one morning and never came back. After breakfast, we walked down a silent street. House shutters were closed. There was a crying woman and a bewildered child. I remember following an open wagon on which were heaped a dozen stiff bodies. That afternoon, I started to inject, as Gottlieb had instructed me, every other man. Sandalia strapped his wrists, put on high boots, and made ready for his rat crusade. Today, my friends, I am Sundalia's captain general of rat killers. If there were no rats, there'd be no bugs carrying bubonic. But I fix them. Good. I just walk into a place and the rats say, here's that old Uncle Gustav. Well, what's the use? <laughs> and they turn up their toes and die. Uh, well, goodbye. Hey, Gustav. Yeah? What is it? You're not going out, Gustav, until you've had an injection of germ. Come on over here. No, Martin. Not until you give up your experiment. Promise to inject all of these people. Every one of them. I know what Gottlieb told you. Refuse to inoculate part of the people, use them for controls for guinea pigs. Pay no attention to that wild man, Sundalis. He's no scientist. I say to Gottlieb, humanity is more important than science. Science is for humanity, Gustav, for all humanity, not just these people here. Please, Sundalis, do as Martin says. No, Leora. I'll do anything for you, but not that. Well, goodbye, children. I now go out to fight the rats. I shall break all the laws of poverty. I shall set fire to warehouses. I shall even burn villages. I shall drive out the rats from their hiding places. Then I shall have my fun. I shall slaughter rats with clubs. I'll shoot them with guns, poison them with gas. And then when I come back, we drink and we celebrate. A week later, we found Sundalius. He was lying on the ground. His eyes bloodshot. Yeah. We had a fine time with the rats here, Caleb. Yeah, you like my new village. Gustav, what's the trouble? Huh? Your eyes, you have a fever. I think it's got me. Some flea got me. Flea from one of those rats. I was just thinking I'll go and quarantine myself. Yeah, I fever, all right. Lord, Martin, I'm so weak. Not scared, no. I'm going to take you home, Gustav. No mercy on No. I have isolated so many, it is my turn. Martin, that leap is right about these jests of the gods. The best one is the tropics. Gods planned them so beautiful. Flowers and sea and mountains. They made the fruit to grow so well that man need not work, and then they laughed and stuck in volcanoes and snakes and damp heat and the plague. The nastiest trick they ever played on man was inventing the flea. You better save your strength, Gustav. It'll pull you through. I'm going to... Give you a serum right now. This time you can't stop Martin, me. Do not try to fool me. It's too late for serum, too late for anything. I'm not afraid to die, Martin, but once more I'd like to see Stockholm and Fifth Avenue on the day of the first snow falls. And Holy Week at Severe and one good last drunk, huh? I'm very peaceful, Martin. It hurts some, but life was a good game. Martin. Yeah. Give these poor people a serum. Save all of them. Come on, Martin. Do as I say. Sundalius became delirious. Early next morning, he died. 
From that day, I injected everybody who wanted my serum. I threw away my notes. I injected as fast as I could, day and night. The plague gradually diminished, and the first boat was scheduled to clear quarantine in a few days. My work is almost over. We watched the ship dock from the porch of our bungalow. Martin, Dr. Stokes was here today. Was he? Yes, there are some new cases at St. Swithin's. He believes it's spreading up there. I'll leave him a supply of serum before we go. Go? When are we going? The Oro. Done all we could in St. Hubert. Yes. We've done everything but but what we came down here to do. Oh, please, dear, don't bring that up again. Please, I... You know I couldn't after. You know why. And what are you going to tell Dr. Gottlieb? That you failed him? That's true, isn't it? The fact that the plague diminished as soon as I began injecting the serum proves... Proves nothing, Martin. You know that. Perhaps the epidemic stopped of its own accord. You don't know. And you'll never know until you go through with the experiment. And your last chance is sent Swithin. Darling, let me go with you. Let me help with the injection and keeping your notes. Please, Martin. Let's finish our job. I have this place ready for you, Doctor. All right. Freeze and keep the sun off you. There's a line of natives a quarter of a mile long. All right, Stokes, let's begin. They are us. Soap and alcohol. The right arms. Yes, Martin. Stokes, get your troops in a circle around the grove. We may need them. Keep two lists. One that I inject, one that I don't. Right, Doctor. Sergeant, you write the names down as I call them out. Yes, sir. I'm ready. Come on. Move up one at a time. Every other one here. Every other one on that side. Your right arm there. Now the doctor... That's it. No, still. Oh! May have lost it. Maybe. Hope so. Move on. John Glamis. Take it down, Sergeant. John Glamis. Hold back! Don't crowd! No changing faces! Just the draw! Get your way, Dr. Stokes! Stay on us! Back there! I'll shoot the first man who gets out alive! Now move out one at a time! All right, that's all for now. Come back in an hour after lunch. Leora. Leora, what's the matter? Nothing, darling. Just a little tired, I guess. No wonder, you poor kid. I'm going to take you home, put you to bed. You'll do no such thing. You're going to finish your experiment. One more day and you work safe. Nothing's going to stop you now. Well, I'll have Stokes take you down the bungalow. Nonsense. You'll need him here. I know my way. What's there to be afraid of? Darling, you're not afraid of anything. Yes, one thing, Martin. Yep. I'd be afraid if anything happened to this experiment. It's so near. And it's our big chance, darling. It's everything we've been working towards. It's our whole lives. Well, I'll be going now. I'll come down to the house as soon as I've finished. Oh. Oh, uh, just one thing, Martin. I forgot my second shot of serum yesterday. Get out your needle, Doctor. All right. Darling, give me your arm. I love your arm. There. I love you, Martin. And thanks for bringing me here. Thanks for... Well, for everything. You're thanking me. Oh, darling. But you don't know what it means for someone like me who doesn't amount to so much getting a chance to be with somebody who does. Oh, Martin, I'm so proud of you and what you've done. Darling, if there's anything we've accomplished here or, or anywhere, it's not mine or yours. It's ours together. Say, why are we talking this way to each other? Leora, nothing wrong. Of course not. It was silly talk, wasn't it? But I wouldn't have missed it. I wouldn't have missed anything, Martin. Not anything in our whole life. That night, I injected the last native, collected my notes, and Stokes drove me back to the bungalow. On the bed, across the folds of torn mosquito netting, I found Leora's body, very frail and very still. I talked to her. I told her everything. 
I... I don't know what... what I said. And that evening I dug a deep pit in the garden and carried her there. A high and windy garden looking toward the sea. I don't remember how I left the island, how I got back to New York, how my notes got published, how I got started working again. I don't remember. And now, I'm standing in this great hall, and I have a scroll of parchment in my hand. I know that the world has just honored my work and that this is the loneliest day of my life. You have just been listening to the Campbell Playhouse production of Aerosmith starring Helen Hayes and Orson Welles. And here he is Orson Welles. Ladies and gentlemen, the road, the road, which is what actors call the theater outside of New York, has had its ups and downs, as you know. The last two years, during which Miss Hayes has brought her wonderful performances, Victoria and Victoria Regina, to 45 cities all over the nation, must definitely be called an up. Miss Hayes concluded her engagement in Victoria only last Saturday, after making theatrical history. Thank you, Orson. Very great honor to have her with us tonight, and I'd like you to meet her. And, Helen, I'm sure that everyone in the theater and everyone who goes to the theater is curious about your plans for the future. What are you going to do next? I'm going to take a darn good rest. <laughs> with your permission, Miss Hayes, I'll tell our audience what a rest means to you. It means, ladies and gentlemen, going back to being Mrs. Charles MacArthur, taking care of... Two children and a house overlooking the Hudson River at Nyack, New York, and, of course, overseeing the family farm in the hills a few miles away. And, Miss Hayes, am I correctly informed that the MacArthur family even goes so far as to grow its own milk? Mm-hmm. We do have four jerseys, and we hope that by economy and careful management, we can eventually get the cost of our milk down to a dollar a quart. I hope you do, Mrs. MacArthur. And I hope even more that Helen Hayes will very soon be back with another play as fine as Victoria Regina. And in behalf of my sponsors, the makers of Campbell Soups, and all of us in the Campbell Playhouse, I want to thank you for coming here tonight. In tonight's presentation in the Campbell Playhouse, Orson Welles and our guest Helen Hayes was heard in the roles of Martin Arrowsmith and Leora. Professor Gottlieb was played by Ray Collins. Thundalius was played by Frank Reddick. Mr. Tozer by Everett Sloan. Al Swenson played Henry Novak. Effie Palmer played Mrs. Tozer. And Carl Frank was Dr. Stokes. Music for the Campbell Playhouse was arranged and conducted by Bernard Herman. And now, Orson Welles, will you tell us about next week's show? Well, next week, our story is the classic shocker. The saga of an airplane that crashed into the private mountains of a well-mannered rajah whose wickedest word was law, somewhere east of the sun and west of the moon. The Green Goddess, starring Madeline Carroll, who will be saved from my clutches in the nick of time. Until that fateful hour on this same station, all of us in the Campbell Playhouse remain obediently yours. <laughs> Inviting you to be with us at the Campbell Playhouse next Friday evening to hear The Green Goddess starring Madeline Carroll. This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.